I did bring the new stuff out, so we'll talk about it. Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Matuska, and I'm here with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and I'm here with Brett Wingfield and Mandy Swart, and we're going to talk airbrushing again uh, today. We did this a few weeks ago, and it was kind of in demand, and we didn't touch on a lot of things, and we had a lot of questions, so we're going to try to fill in the gaps today. We have a wide assortment of um, airbrushes, Iwata, uh, Badgers, um, Pachés, and a whole lot of products, and uh, just some fun stuff, and maybe if you can uh, uh, comment in your questions on paints, and needles, and tips, and hoses, and compressors, exhaust fans, everything you can think of, we'll try to answer them for you, and maybe give you a few little demonstrations. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Um, so I think to start with, um, we'll just go through some airbrushes quickly here um, and show you a little bit of the basics and then the offerings that we kind of recommend from the airbrush companies. Um, to start with, I think I'll start with um, Pache and they're a fine company and they have been around forever. And this is the Pache H model airbrush. It can run off of either a cup for small amounts of paint or it can, I don't have my bottle here I guess, um, it will work off of a bottle. Um, it's a single action airbrush. You push, you push down for air, you adjust the amount of paint up here. Here's the bottle. And they're friction fit. So you just rock them back and forth. You can take them on and take them off. Very cool. What do you think of that? Um, I think when we, when I was in school, we had about 20 of these. We and still do. I bet you still have them on the line. It's kind of the workhorse of airbrushes and um, it may not do as precise a detail as some of the high-end airbrushes, but that's a $30 airbrush and I wouldn't be without that airbrush in my shop. I love it. And that's a Pache deal? That's the H. The H. In the, the double action model would be the VL. Double action means you push down for air, you pull back for the amount of paint you want. So it's a, the trigger, it has a little rocker on them, the double actions. You push down for air, you pull back for paint. If you want a little paint, don't pull back very far. If you want a lot of paint, pull back farther. Um, the BL has a little roller up here that's a governor that will put your trigger in the desired position. So all you have to do is push down each time. And uh, that's, uh, this, this airbrush I bought in night. I shouldn't have. 1973 for seventy dollars, and I think we offer it less than that now. Yeah, and you you can actually buy full airbrush only or in the kit. Sure, they come in a kit with with version. All of these airbrushes come with um, three tips, maybe if you want, if you buy the kit. Yeah. One, three, and five. One, three, and five. One being finer, three in the middle, and five being a wider spray. Mm -hmm. And even that little H, that $30 airbrush with a number one tip on, properly thinned paint and low air pressure, you'd be utterly amazed at what that $30 airbrush can do. How much do you thin your paint? We thin our paint quite a bit. Yeah. How much do you thin your paint? Quite a bit. Like how do you know when it's too much? <laughs> um, when it's too much, it doesn't cover anything. <laughs> oh yeah, and too much would be relative to air pressure too. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it, if you're, spraying a lot of air pressure, you can get it too thin pretty fast and you'll have those little spider legs. Spider webs? Yep. So then what do you do? Then you turn the pressure turn down. Turn the air pressure down, yep. like magic. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, Pache a few years ago came out with the Talon, and this is a really pretty airbrush, kind of a metallic yellow color, orange color, and uh, that's a double action airbrush. It has a large cup on the top, it's gravity feed. Gravity feed means your paint goes in here, and gravity holds it down next to the needle. So the idea is that the gravity feed airbrushes um, spray a little better, I guess. I think so. I think, the, I think it keeps the paint available in Close, the reservoir yeah. Yeah. rather than having to suck it up from the bottom. I mean, this is a nice airbrush. It's a larger airbrush. Also available airbrush or with a kit. Sure. Yeah. And I think with the kits, again, you get um, two or three needle sizes as well as nozzles. Joe Martin says he's still using his VL1 and VL3 Pachés from the 1970s. Yeah, yeah. They haven't changed. I they bet, haven't changed. I bet those 
actually airbrushes have painted more fish than there are more expensive more precise airbrushes and I remember at a world show many years ago Erling Mork came up and he ordered like six of them for the he's the developer of the Euro eyes with Frank Neumeyer and he ordered six of those for his artist to paint the Euro eyes are painted with an airbrush and uh, that was the only airbrush that would work for him um, and then Pache has come out with the Raptor and this is this is a much smaller version it's not as kind of not as bulky it's a little you know more precise and petite if you don't want a big airbrush again it's a gravity feed small cup um, this is a really nice airbrush for taxidermists double action push down for air pull back for paint you can set it, well, all these you can set back here so you don't get a lot of travel in the trigger. It will, it's like a little governor. So the trigger will only go back to the same spot each time. Do you prefer single or double action? Typically double, but it depends on what I'm doing. I still love my single action um, H airbrushes. For which job? So what, when you say it depends on what you're doing? Most often bigger bigger things. Maybe, maybe large colors on a fish, um, belly whites where you're um, on the smaller cups, if you're continually filling up white or a color that you're putting on a lot of paint, um, the little cups, you have to refill them a lot. With the uh, um, H airbrush, you can put it in the bottle, you know, large amounts of paint. Um, it works good for sealers. A lot of times I spray the inside of my mouth, my gills that I can't get to with a brush. Um, my sealer, I paint my sealer on there, works real well. Any of the larger uh, paint particle like iridescent colors go really nice through it um, as opposed to getting them getting some the other ones. Any up. metallics and iridescents actually have metallic flakes in them and uh, the one thing that doesn't spray them well is a real precise airbrush so that's where this would come in really nice. I like to have this set up with my others just with a pure white and a gloss. I was gonna say you do gloss a lot don't you yeah, for sealing things. I do for sealing powders and and putting on a final coat. A very, uh, you know, kind of an advanced technique for, for laying your paint, layering your paint, you'll get depth. And I know I've seen Brett lots of times, put on a color, some metallics, seal it with a clear, um, put on some more color, seal it, and you're actually sandwiching and suspending metallic particles and glitters, you know, it works real well. Yes. Okay. And nice to have here as opposed to a rattle can. Yeah. You've got a little more control over it. We just went through a whole rattle can the other day and one fifty. This is um, an Iwata, and Iwata is um, has a pretty big offering of airbrushes. And this is the Neo. This again, I think, is a thirty dollar airbrush. Um, it's got a .35 tip, which is not a ultra precise, but it's precise enough for most taxidermists. Um, these, the top screws off. And you can put a larger cup on top like this. Does it come like. with that? Comes with that. Both versions. Mm -hmm. And this again is a double action airbrush, very inexpensive. Push down for air, pull back for paint. Um, a lot of people like this. It's a good airbrush for acrylics just because of the needle size and the nozzle size works real well. Alan Jensen says he's sitting in a turkey blind watching. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the volume down or you'll scare him away. Well, good luck. Uh, it this, is that time of year. This is the uh, single action Iwata version. And now you noticed with the Pache, you adjusted the color up here, the amount of, amount of paint up here. On this one, you adjust it by this ribbed collar back here. So you open it. It pulls that needle out, you get a lot of paint, you close it down, you get little paint. The only function the trigger gives you is air. Push down for air, adjust here for the quantity of paint that you want. Can you keep pulling these up with a little um, box? Any of these airbrushes, I think all of them that we have here have a quick disconnect. And Badger offers a really nice hose that Snaps on, snaps off. Um, somewhere here. This would be the, here's the, the little nozzle Brett was talking about. And 
you buy it according to what brand of airbrush you're using. It just screws onto the threaded part where the hose goes. And then this is the Badger hose. And it's a quick disconnect, just like your big disconnects on your air tools. Um, you pull it back, snap the, snap the ring shut, and you've got a leak proof you know, airbrush you can hose switch connector. From Iwata to Pache yeah. with Snap it off, snap another one on, snap it off. So snap if you're putting it on an Iwata brush, you get the Iwata Pache, Pache, yep. yep. Badger Badger. But the hose itself, you can pop that off and put sure. this one right on. Sure. And they pop off a little quicker if you uh, have air connected to them. Yeah, there's the talon. Yeah. Um, and this is the Iwata B, and I think we use this a lot around the shop. It's a very, very precise airbrush. Double action again. Push down for air, go back for paint. Um, it's got a small reservoir cup called a B cup. It's got a point two. Point two. So this is rather precise. I think I find for spraying lacquers, the smaller the needle works better for me. For acrylics and water base, I prefer the three or the 3.5. Up a little bit. We have another one. This is the this is the C version of that. It's got a point three, I think, on this maybe. Um, and uh, larger cup. And I think when you get the ones with the larger cup, whether it's the Talon or whether it's the Iwatas, they will come with a cap because the worst thing you don't, you don't want to do, you go in there, um, you don't want to do is be leaning over a fish or a deer head or a game head and pour this in the air or something. It's happened. Voice of experience. Ray Lamb wants to know if you use different um, brush for water base and oil base or do you use the same gun? We use the same gun, but I, I like waters out of a larger nozzle. Yeah. And I think the guys that are true water people, um, I know Mike is one of them, Mike Orthaber is somebody who is, if you use a brush for water-based paints, you continue to use it for water-based paints. Um, you don't mix. Try not to use it for lacquers. They say that the lacquer will get into the, the metal and you'll continue to have problems with it. I don't know, I haven't experienced that, but a couple of the, the guys that are real water-based experts have said that. And there's a lot of, lot of people spraying a lot of different uh, mediums through their airbrushes. There's acrylics, that, you know, oh, which yeah. are basically the waters. There's the lacquers. Um, one of the better paints I think I ever used, we would take oil paint, mix it with turpentine, shake it up in a, in a milk jug and then strain it and it gave us the most vibrant paint but oil paints don't dry very fast it was a was a drawback when we got to lacquers they dried so fast but the um, I look at fish that I did 40 years ago and I go wow that color held good and it's the old same thing Picasso used you know the water or the oil paints you know it worked really well it sprayed well too we used to clean everything up with gasoline don't try this at home. <laughs> All our machets were asbestos. <laughs> I, I used that stuff for years. And never had any. <laughs> Morris Stevens, what's the right air pressure? You tell. Um, I think we kind of touched on that a minute ago. It's I would say your air pressure has to match the viscosity of your paint. So as you're trying to spray greater detail, um, we're going to thin our paint down because it flows a little bit better and we're going to turn our air pressure down. So you're just gonna to wanna to match that. People ask that all the time and my best answer is, I don't know what the number is, it's about, <laughs> yeah, it's not very much. Um, is that what I can hear right now? Yeah, a little bit more than yeah. that. Somebody <laughs> asked how thin to thin your paint and thin paint sprays effortlessly yes. and with very little air pressure. Um, if your paint is too thin, you've got to go over your fish 20 times to get any pigment on your fish. So if you've thinned it so much, you're not going to see green going on. You're not going to see yellow going on. So you want to somewhere in between. Bubba says you're as old as Picasso. 
<laughs> Bubba, you're right. I am as old as Picasso. But I got both my ears, not like Van Gogh. <laughs> Are you gonna show them how you ran your airbrush before you had an air compressor? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hard, but uh -oh, back in the back snap in the day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, um, Rob Levy wants to know what a good air compressor air compressor to use with all of these. What do you think? I I'm spoiled. We have quite a few different offerings for air compressors, we and do. I think they are, you can get away with a lot. You can do just what Tom did with just the hose. Yep. Use manpower. Um, but these little tabletop quiet air compressors are just, they make painting fun, and I think that's half the battle with airbrush painting. Um, you don't have to listen to the noise pollution. Um, of a big compressor, you can run an airbrush off of any compressor, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a continuous run or a great big tank um, that you might keep in another place, but those little tabletop units are also nice. I started out as a beginning taxidermist with absolutely no money, like most beginners, and uh, so, no, no, so <laughs> I needed a compressor. Well, I couldn't buy a compressor. So I went down and they have these tanks you fill up. If you got a flat tire, you run down, you fill them up at the gas station, you run up, you fill your tire, it holds about 30 PSI. So I went down to the gas station, I hooked, rigged it all up so it hooked up to my hose. I fill my tank up at the gas station, come up, and I'm painting a largemouth bass. And I mean, I get one fourth of the belly painted and I'm out of air. I jump in my car with my little tank, <laughs> I run down there. It took me 15 trips to the gas station just to put a base coat on this fish. So then, my first air compressor was one of the two wheels with the handle. Uh, worked good, I had it at the end of my um, bench. I, anytime it kicked on, I had to walk away because it was too noisy. Um, from there, we went to the big air compressors. We've got a, if you wanna run air tools, you need a big compressor. And because we can't handle the noise when we're painting, it, it startles you too much. Um, we put it down in the lower unit. That works well. It works well for us, yeah. not for them down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, like Brett was saying, these little tabletop versions, um, Iwata has a couple exceptional offerings. Pache has a really nice red one, which I lost to a student. I <laughs> sold to a student in the last class. I got it out for myself, and I just ordered another one because it's a two. really nice two of them, yeah, one for a yeah. student. Oh. Um, they're a nice, nice yeah. outfit. But We bring them to shows. We won one at the World Show um, yeah. in Iwata one. Yeah. And uh, Badger has a nice one. Yeah, Badger has The quieter one. you want it, the more you're going to spend. Um, Ernest King says, checking in from North Carolina. Howdy, y'all. Hi, Ernest. Nice. Um, could you explain the ins and outs? from Matt Welsh. Could you explain the ins and out of different lacquer thinners? Brett told me about a slow lacquer thinner at the Iowa show. I'm struggling to find it. Gotcha. I got it. I'm at somebody um, took it. We do. Can we you have the can over there, that square can. There you go. So any solvents um, basically have are rated on a burn rate. Is that correct? Based Evaporation. Temper, yeah. Yeah. Temperature. So where do you get this at? We get this from Arnold Motor Supply, but but it's the evaporation rate. So as you're painting. Lacquers dry very, very fast, so they clog your tip. So if you're making spots on a trout, for instance, they, it dries in the tip. You might get two or three. So you can put retarder in it, and that is very helpful. Um, any of the paint, even the water cell retarders for their paint to slow down the set time or the dry time. Um, we always used, just up from our hardware store, um, what's the brand, Clean something or other? Um, but uh, safety clean, but we used to get lacquer thinner from the hardware store, and we would notice when we mixed it in our bottles, after a day or two it would coagulate, it looked funny. Shake it up really good, it worked, but it definitely could clog your airbrush. Somebody said, get slow lacquer thinner, and we said, what's that? It's actually called Reducer, and this is from Arnold's. You can get it from Napa, you can get it from anywhere. Just say you want a slow reducer, um, and something that will uh, is compatible with lacquer paints. 
I don't know the science behind it, but I think the standard cleaning cheap lacquer thinner has a burn rate at 70 or 72. So it has a certain flash point at room temperature. I believe the slower lacquer thinners will be at more like 100. So it has a higher temperature. So it requires a higher temperature for it to evaporate. So it goes slower. So typically if you, if you go to a slow lacquer thinner over an industrial one that you get at the hardware store, you're gonna notice a difference. Your paint will paint better. Um, it probably won't clean your equipment as good. We use um, the cheap yep. stuff for cleaning because it is a little more harsh, but mm -hmm. um, you'll notice a difference. And it's quite a bit more expensive. Yes, it's about twice the price. Yep. So use your... Don't wash your birds in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope that helped. What airbrush, this is Colton Stevens, what airbrush do y'all use when mounting ducks and painting the beak? Ooh, I've seen some pretty elaborate painted bills. I think all of them work well. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, like, when you go to a, you know, a show and you talk to some of these, you know, world award winners, and they've got the most unbelievably impressive work, and you say, you know, what airbrush do you use? Not that that's gonna make a difference, you know, it's kind of the person, but uh, a lot, I've been amazed at a $30 airbrush these people are using. You think of the work you could do with a $300 airbrush. They're doing just fine with a $30 yeah. airbrush. I think it's kind of what you get used to. Um, I wouldn't be afraid of the, the bottom of the liar, the, the less expensive Iwatas. Um, the Badger has a great offering of airbrushes. Um, Pache's, they all work good. If you're, I, I think, depending on what you're painting, if you were just doing game head finishing, this and wanted to have a good quality airbrush, that B cup works good because you're not putting on a lot of paint on a deer eye or a deer nose. Whereas if you're painting the belly of a fish or doing larger fish, this would be very helpful or this size cup would be very helpful. Um, for those just tuning in, um, we got Tom, Brett, and Mandy with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company and we're talking airbrushes today, but stay tuned because we will be, like always, doing a giveaway at the very end. So stay tuned for that, for a chance to win. Are the bubbles coming across? You gotta tell them. There's been a couple. Can you get a some couple. thumbs up and hearts? <laughs> Quinn's not on yet, so you're gonna oh. see all the crazies. Um, are you demoing? Are you showing? Some sure, stuff? we'll show you. Yeah. Show you some. Um, why don't... Do I need to move? No, you're good, you stay there, and I'm gonna have you um, we have an airbrush with a regulator on there too. Do you have it? This is another nice little thing that you can either get the badger hose with it. Oh, look at all those thumbs. There's I lots know, of thumbs. Right? Oh, good. So Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because the more of that we get, the more inspired she gets come up with new and innovative products. Let's be honest, you get pretty excited too. <laughs> no, I don't, but you, you do. Um, this is a, called a pack valve, and it's a quick disconnect. Um, do you have an airbrush you want to use here? What about that one? I kind of... Or this one? I hope I... Or this one? I think this one for sure I think is clean. I cleaned them for sure on the outside. Um, this pack valve is nothing more than a, just a little regulator. Not very expensive, pretty inexpensive, and it keeps you from having a big regulator at the compressor that you have to go run over and, and uh, adjust all the time. This will adjust your air pressure. And it doesn't have a gauge on it, you kind of guess just by sound. This one right here. Looks way bigger in the catalog, we probably need to bring that picture down. It's a little guy. <laughs> it is. It's a little guy. <laughs> It works very, very well, and it's got the quick disconnect on it, or you can add it to um, any of, um, works best with the Badger hoses. Sometimes it gets a little confusing, matching. Um, also, while we're talking about hoses, this is a braided hose. It's got a fabric mesh on the outside. Um, we also have, they're called HP hoses. They come, I think Badgers are clear, Pache's are red. Um, they're plastic. They work good, they're inexpensive. Lacquer thinner likes to eat them when it gets hungry. Oh. Mm -hmm. So uh, you prefer the braided, can. the line? Um, I don't have a preference as long as I don't lay it in a puddle of lacquer thinner. Uh, most of them here that we have are braided. Yeah. 
Okay, there you go. Ooh, what am I gonna do with that? Um, you probably need some paint, don't you? Maybe a sunset. <laughs> um, could you grab me? Fish. Oh, um, Mandy, over there, would you grab me, um, I don't know, yellow maybe? Sure. Yeah, can you show them how much we're gonna finish? <laughs> See, let me draw on the board. Can I draw on the board? Yes. Because I'm putting it in a tapered cup, so you probably wouldn't be able to see. <clears throat> um, if I were putting it in a container like this, and I'll, I'll refer to it in parts. So if I put in, um, let's say, 10 parts of pigment, I'd go with maybe three to four parts of thinner. Thinner, paint. Now, you put too much thinner in it, too much thinner in it, <laughs> you're going to uh, not get a lot of coverage. You put too little thinner in it and you're you could have airbrush problems. Now any of the airbrush paints say they're good to go out of the bottle, and they really are, but you can fine tune them to your application. Now, in addition to this, um, I would like to put in at least a part of retarder, and any of the paint companies have retarder. Uh, Polytransfer has retarder, Life Tone has retarder, the acrylics have retarder, and so you're gonna put in maybe one part of retarder. So now I've got one part too many, but put in just a little bit of retarder. And after you've done this, it's like baking a cake. You don't measure things out. You put in a squirt of paint, you put in a little bit of thinner and a couple drops of retarder and see how it sprays. If it's not spraying well at low pressure, maybe a little bit more thinner. If you're spraying spots or vermiculation and it's not um, spraying nice, it's fogging in the end tip of the gun, a little more Retarder? Yeah. This is scary mixing paint for you. I might really <laughs> mess things up. Okay, okay, those things. Notice you're using your bottle cap on one of your paint brushes. Um, yeah, we like these. I mean, this is That's great for precise control of your thinner. We've got our retarder, and um, we even put it on these bottles. Mm -hmm. Is this color okay? Would you like that color? I think that's a great color. Dan Hutzik says he'd like a lizard paint. <laughs> what? Actually, Dan says paint a lizard. Paint, paint, a lizard. <laughs> paint a lizard. All right. We we're going to do some hieroglyphics or petroglyphs. <laughs> okay. Now, I probably, I probably have a half inch of yellow, so I'm going to put a good squirt of thinner to retard, or I'm sorry, um, reducer to thin it down. Just to be safe, we're gonna give it a little shot of retarder. There you go. Can I drink it? You can drink it. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna so, give you some uh, different bottles. Start doing to the top. <laughs> Tide pods and everything. <laughs> okay, so this is a gravity feed brush. We're just gonna put a little bit in the top. Come over here. And we're gonna I don't know about this lizard. <laughs> you need a dark color. Well, this was this was our paint. Is it working? Did I clean it good enough? It is very nice. I'm not the best taker carer of my equipment, and oftentimes my airbrushes don't work when I pick them up. Just stay in the lines. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> So we can turn, we can turn this down. I should start wide. So we can make a nice wide spray like this. If we were painting on body colors on our fish, we can do something like that. Or if we wanted to paint extreme close up detail, we can turn it way down. You can see I'm adjusting it here at the governor here at the back. we can paint much finer, like 
this. Kind of hear just a little bit of of uh, sound there. I think I'm getting some buildup on the end of the on the end of the needle. I have a bad habit of taking the crown cap off, which we may have a tool that helps people like me to bend their needles. And then you bend the needle, don't you? I do. <laughs> we're going to show you how to fix that. Okay, so Dan, I got a dark color, more lizard color over here if you'd like. More lizardish? Yeah. And I've got a cup you can dump in. So your mixture of paint, say you mix up a whole bunch, you can store it in our bottles and save it, come back to it and use it again so you don't have to waste. With these gravity feed bottles, if you have a... If uh, you nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have a nozzle like this, um, go ahead, you can suck that yellow out in there, yeah. in that one if you want to. Yeah. Um, this is what, you so squeeze it. Squeeze it. Watch this, it's like magic. No more yellow in there. And now we're able to re clean, put a little thinner in. Oh, wait, Spur wait, wait, around. let me show you something. Where's our little. Uh... Those are these bottles right here. And then the caps that you're seeing are with the life tone oh, and the woods and water, and oh, yeah. you can get either one to fit. And um, they come, they fit both sizes, so you can get the 28 oh, millimeters for the. Dan says, "Love it, great job. That's a yeah. blue all day long." Oh, here you go. <laughs> you can empty that right into yeah. yeah. So this, this is your waste cup. Yeah. You can see this one's been a little bit used, but you would just insert the end of your brush here. And then you strain all that out. Yeah, we're yeah. We're and that it out. it's got a filter in it. Now, normally, if you'd be doing that, it would be we'd have a fog. roiling fog in here, but it Water. keeps the fog down to the. Clean pot. Yep. Which that right there is twenty-four dollar product is all. And they got a little That's filter in them. They're nice and clean when you get them, but we use ours a lot. Here's what they look like. Um. Can we show my... Mm, yeah. So for all these fancy airbrushes, for all of your investments, the very, very, very best thing you can do, no matter what you put in here for an airbrush, is hidden behind the boxes. An airbrush holder. It's about a $13 piece. If I've got this airbrush sitting here without my crown cap on the end of it, and oops, I drop it, handing it to Mandy, Sunday. I'm going to cry. Sunday. I'm going to cry to fix it. But I mean, those airbrush needles are, yeah. oh, I don't know, 10 to 20 bucks a piece. And yeah. when they're bent, they're bent. And that and hanger holds four airbrushes, right? Um, it, yeah. I yes, it, it does. Could. It could. You could hold one here. Yeah. And then a couple up here. Yep. See, so you go to the fingernail ladies in the malls. They all use them. Yeah. We sell a lot to fingernail ladies. Huh. And oh, then, you want to give me some tape? Product coming from Chad Elliott. Yeah. Sharpener. Yeah. We actually got this from a customer who watches our videos. I, sorry, I cannot remember your name, but I talked to you at the Iowa show, I think. But uh, he gave us this and said it works great, and he really liked it, so we looked into it. It's called Sharpener. Um, if you want to see how it works, um, go online and type in Sharpener, A-I-R, and one word. And uh, it's an airbrush needle sharpener. And when you watch the video, it will amaze you what Chad does. Um, this is, an, and they've got different ones. They, um, Pache has a separate sharpen air sharpening system. And then the Iwata and Badgers, I think, all yep. work on this one. Yep. Um, but he actually took, this is an Iwata needle, and you can bend it over. Um, oh, I know. Oh, gosh. Look at that. 
Did you try this before you? No, I saw him on. I, 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 I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Hope it works. <laughs> okay, that baby's bent. Now, have you ever? Ooh, oh my gosh! Run your fingers on there. Can you feel the edge? Yes. Yes. Bad, right? Yes. Now, if you have a little bent over needle like that, it happens so fast. Um, your paint will hang up on that and it will clog very, very rapidly. Inside of here are four holes. The first hole on the right is a 600 grit bevel for the tip only, that bent tip. The next one is a 1200 grit honing stone for the tip only. On this one, I might not say it right, Chad, I might have to go watch again. This one is a 600 for the more of the shoulder of the taper and then there's a 1200 there. So you insert it into there and you just twist it. And I think he said twist it uh, 12, 14, 15 times, doesn't take very much. Go round, 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 pull it out, feel that. Oh my gosh. I know, I yeah. told you, it's good, right? I guess. Yeah, okay, that's, I haven't not, seen this that's yet. for real. Really? Now that was 600. Really? Now you want to polish it. I don't know what these are, these needles come polished at, but you put it in the next one and I'm twisting it. And this is a little needle, so I gotta use two fingers because my fingers aren't very nimble anymore. I'm gonna do a dozen times in that. Pull it out. Now that should be, you know, 12 or 1600 grit. Then to do the shoulder, I'm gonna go over here. He said, I think on the video, a lot of times he doesn't do the coarse one, he just does a fine. Twist it a few times, and then so I'm gonna go Sharp and thing. Air is the first and only handheld device that is designed specifically for repairing bent and damaged airbrush fluid needles. The concept and design was created by an airbrush artist, especially for the airbrushing community. It works by utilizing good, multiple angles, allowing, allowing your damaged needle to be straightened efficiently and with precision each and every time while maintaining its factory angle. Now when I order needles, I'll use usually, um, you know, you, I can go to the supply company and grab a couple, but when I had to buy them, I'd always buy two or three because when you're, when you're done, you can't straighten those up very well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. Sold. Um, so that is a new product we will be carrying and a retail price is $45. Yes, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did not expect that. I really thought it was going to... Uh, How do you clean the sharpener? No, I... Mm, we'll have to ask on that one. I think you just buy a new sharpener from us. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much in there to clean. It's... I gotta see this. Heavy duty, huh? That's cool. Um, yeah, we were... I, it sat on my desk and Mandy kept trying to get me to use it and try it and call Chad and I put it off and put it off and put it off until I watched his um, YouTube video and then I thought, whoa, so I had to try it. He actually takes the needle and he bends it over, like really bends it over. And you weren't confident enough to do that. I bent it enough, <laughs> this is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we gonna do on scales up there or what? Um, yeah, if there's no other questions. Do you want a right different now? color? I got a dark, can I paint a dark? Yep, you sure can, up. you sure can. While people are asking questions, I can yeah, go ahead and comment any questions you have and we'll answer them throughout. And don't forget to stay tuned because we will be doing a giveaway at the very end. What is your giveaway? Do we know yet? We're going to make them stay tuned and find out. Ooh. Ernest King has a question. Yes, sir. Right here. I have, go for it. I have an Iwata HBC airbrush double action when I try to use it. Air comes back through my paint cup. I have cleaned it and it still blows air back. Yes. Uh, I might know what that is. I, I think it too, yeah. it, the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you take the back off, if you pull the needle out, if you take this little nut off, am I still going okay? Yep. <laughs> and don't tip it upside down because this will come off, the trigger will come out. Oops, trigger's stuck now. All right, we're gonna leave it. Then this gets, Oops, I might need a tool. This inside mechanism comes out. Now, if you've never taken apart an airbrush, the first time you do, you're gonna be panicky. You're gonna think, oh my God, how am I gonna get it back together? Um, you'll get it back together. You might have parts left over, but if it works, go with it. Yeah. Oop, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> that part might remain left over for a while. Um, then, 
up in here, there is a slot, like a, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it's like a screwdriver slot. And it'll take a narrow screwdriver that's kind of wide, right down in there, fit it into that slot, and I'm gonna bet that that, that little disc in there got yep. unscrewed packing, a little bit. Packing ring, did he, do we rem remember HP, BC plus? Doesn't say plus, does say double action though. The plus, Tom, am I right? The plus, the plus is supposed to be the... impervious to thinners. So yeah. the pl plus should, uh, well, I lost an important part here somewhere. Well, don't step in around. That happens every time. <laughs> Mark. Every time. It's a mark. It's a mark. Oh, One of the marks. He always says, I forgot you're having your thing on 430. <laughs> Hi, Mark. If you'd have tuned in, you'd be watching. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's most of the time what it is. And, and it's blowing paint back through or bubbling. Yep. And if you're, if you're bubbling, something's clogged between here and here. And the best thing of all of it, if you just can't get it figured out, Iwata has a tremendous Their uh, service is good. Service. Their service is very yeah. good. They'll, they'll service. I think any of there, but Badger's yeah. the same way and yeah. Pache. If you yeah. have a problem, um, we will help you through it as good as we can because we've taken most of these apart and keep them running, but there's things that are over our pay grade that will refer you right to Iwata or Pache or Badger. And they'll have them back to you in no time. They're fast. You pack them up, ship them out, and they'll get it right back yeah. to you. Shane Halstead wants to know what's the best tipping paint to use. Tipping paint um, through an airbrush, or I I'm thinking so. he's. We could use any paint um, through the airbrush to tip scales. You could do it. I can show you here if we had any of our lacquer paints. Um, will come in in iridescent. Mm -hmm. The Woods and Waters uh, water-based paint is also a really good one. You might paint that through your bigger brush, but you could add any of the liquid scales to that Woods and Waters or vice versa to create your own custom blend of paint. But basically, if you wanted to spray them through an airbrush, we can turn this way down what we're talking about tipping is kind of a detailing technique that would just spray this outer edge of the scale, something like this. And we've got it blown up big to illustrate. But get your paint turned way down. Your, your air pressure turned way down, your paint nice and thin. And you can paint those details. I'm going to try to do it on these smaller scales, like so. Here, I'll go this way so you can see what I'm doing. And this is just lacquer paint. I would say the best paint to use is something that you're comfortable getting nice and thin, um, whichever brand you're, you like the most. If you were to paint by hand, you might use some of the Woods and Waters paints or the liquid scales, they work really well. But painting just the back half of the scale like that, painting some details on it. Now, how come you're painting in the middle of the scale when you said tipping? Well, I'm kind of on the back. Um, I think it's more of a detail thing. Um, tipping is an old term that we did for years we because did. we didn't know each other. <laughs> That's what I did anyway. I don't know, and I don't know where that started, but um, you can go back to the old treasure gold waxes and yeah, some old of that. treasure gold. Remember yeah. that um, scale enhancement? Yeah, yeah, would be a good term. Yeah, um, we need to find it. Yeah. I'm putting this uh, I want it back together, and I used I want a lube. Super lube. And yeah. it's super good. New formula too, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, it used, used to be blue, yeah. um, and it's in place of oil, compatible Which that with comes your in paint. Your kits too. It's included in your kit, and I think there's a couple airbrush. The Iwata airbrushes come with a little bottle of it. Oh, they do. They do. That's nice. Yep. I mean, it's good stuff. Keep your airbrushes, you know, lubricated, and they will run better. Jiggin' Jim, I have an Iwata SC Gravity Feed airbrush. What causes it to have? 
extra drops of paint to blow out? I, go ahead. I'm gonna bet it's a cracked tip. Cracked tip. Yeah, somehow I'm thinking your needle and your tip aren't, I, sometimes the, the needle gets forced through the tip and the tip actually gets cracked or bent or something like that. If you were to take an optimizer, for instance, look at just the tip and usually you will be amazed if there's cracked or deformities, but somehow you got a, a big chunk of paint sneaking around that needle, not the tip, I think. And let me see if I can show you a tip. Here we go. Um, what Tom's talking about, if you can zoom in on this, is just this little tiny cone in the Iwata version, this little tiny cone right here. It's the size of two grains of salt. Yep, and here I'll watch the needle come through it. So if, if the very end of that gets a split in it, you'll have paint collect there, and then it will eventually just push off as it gets pressure behind it. And if and that, you take that tip out and you drop it, you might as well be calling 1-800-488-3256. Hey, man, we got a bunch of them. Tough. Um, um, Rob Lady, do you get much overspray when using these in garage with cars? Typically, an airbrush doesn't. I mean, if we're spraying a large amount of uh, sailfish or a muskie or a northern, um, you may generate a little bit of fume, but but airbrush paints aren't like a big automotive sprayer, I guess. And I think lacquers dry fast enough that even the particles that fall on the car probably would may wipe off. May create dust, but would, yeah. And any of the acrylics and water paints are heavier, they actually go down and create less fumes. Um, Neil wants to know where you can get the Sharpen Air. They're $59.99 on Amazon. We will be carrying them soon, so we'll have an order probably check with us in about a week, two weeks, and we'll have them for you. And again, for from us, it's forty-four ninety-five. Whoa! Wow. We beat Amazon. Ooh. We do beat Amazon. And oh. he said he found one for forty-four ninety-nine, so we still oh, beat. Oh, they were forty-four twenty-five. <laughs> um, Joe Martin, I always replace my tips when I change out the needles. Always have spares in your toolbox. Good idea. Good idea. Really good idea. Good tip. The needle and the, and the fluid nozzle is what it's called, need to be compatible. Yep. What else we got? Are you done painting? I, I'm kind of done. Um, we could do a lot, but we could switch them out. We got some products. We got all kinds of products. You got your airbrush yeah. cleaner. Uh, let's talk about glosses, maybe. Um, we, you can gloss your fish with a lot of different things. And um, the rattle can, a lot of people um, use the rattle can. I know Brett has exceptional results with a uh, rattle can, huh? Accidentally. <laughs> uh, and we use, um, um, it is Krylon's yeah. clear Crystal glaze. Clear, clear Glaze. And uh, sandwiching your colors on, and I've seen Mike Orthoper do it, and the gloss that they get is outstanding, but um, a can of, a rattle can of gloss, I don't know, is it 10, 11 bucks? And so that's a lot, it takes a lot on a fish. Um, we tend to use a, a high solids urethane from the automotive companies, and it comes with a catalyst, and you mix um, A and B together, there's directions on it, how much, usually it's 50%, 100, 100 parts of one, 50 parts of the catalyst. Um, you don't wanna waste it, because it is expensive, it's about $100 a gallon, um, so you get really five quarts because you got a quart of um, catalyst and you can do a lots and lots of fish. You can yeah. probably do a hundred fish easily or more with a gallon, but it's the initial output of, you know, a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, I we've used, used a whole can of the rattle can glass on the 30 inch walleye, oh, an entire can, so 10 bucks a fish where you're talking about a buck of fish. And the reason I got one of these brand new um, gravity you know, sprayers is because if you leave your catalyzed gloss in your sprayer, you might as well throw it away the next day because you won't <laughs> clean it up. And I've done it a couple times. 
So we might need to have a new one, which is why we're opening the packages. That's oh, what is that what's going on? <laughs> That's what I swear you have one laying around up here, but... Okay. No. Oops. So that, this spray gun is a Pache one, and it's $67.95. That's what it sells for. Um, these work good. We've always used a great big automotive, you know, the big chrome oh, ones. Yeah. Um, this works good. It's very, very precise. precise. You've got a control back here for the amount of volume. You've got a control over on the side um, for the fan pattern. A uh, little breather cap on the top. You put the amount of gloss. I mean, you big sailfish painters and marlin painters, um, you can paint, you can turn this right down. You can paint a big saltwater fish with these too. This is like a extra large version of an airbrush. Not a fingernail painter? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you said toenails, I think, not toes. <laughs> uh, but that's a really nice gloss. And any of the paint companies sell good quality, um, high luster glosses. Uh, Pache has a, um, what's it called, matte finish. They've got a gloss finish. Um, they've got a urethane where you mix A and B together, similar to my automotives that we use. Um, same with the... Water-based paints, the woods and waters, they have matte finishes for, we use them on bird feet, bird bills. So you add that to the paint then? Um, or you do it after? No, after. 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 But uh, this is a real nice, you know, affordable spray gun. I think the Binks, the big Bink spray guns, they're three, four, five, six hundred dollars um, and they have a lot of what they call knockoffs that you can get from Harbor Freight and things and those work also, uh, but this is a, a nice in-between model, something lower. Speaking yeah. of uh, the different paints, we also are now going to be carrying Ooh, four idea. ounce life tone bottles. Oh, yeah. So a lot of people just don't go through all the eight ounce and there's a lot of waste, so we're now going to be carrying the four ounce version of the life tone um, lacquer paint. That's a good deal because um, eight ounces is sometimes just too much for people to use. Mm -hmm. And there's colors that uh, you don't need a lot. You just need a little to do a project and yeah. you don't want to have this bottle sitting around you know, never to use it again. So talking new products. Ooh, is it that time? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if some of you caught the random live last week, but we were talking about some new products that we got in, and we'll kind of show you some of those real quick. Again. Disaster. Here's your gambrel and your gambrel. Show me how this works. Well, you take the legs through here. She's guessing. And you go like this, and then it'll hang. That showed me. And you could put an animal's leg through that. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Uh, like this a is a nice sturdy gamble for. Don't for Google this stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff that comes <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. I was okay. trying to, we were trying to find pictures, and it was like, oh my gosh. Uh, but these are very helpful when. We, unfortunately, we have to undress the animals before we can make them look good. Um, this is... And now we're going to talk about that. The tail... Stripper? Stripper. <laughs> tail splitter. Um, we carry it in the aluminum, but what's nice about this bright orange is it's a durable plastic, and it is super bright. You're not going to lose it? No. You're not gonna lose and it's only $4.95. Four fifty. Four fifty. dollars Even better. Cheaper. cheaper. Even better. <laughs> Here's your grooming comb. <laughs> nice what do you think? Back brush and comb. They call them clapper dancers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I like these. Yeah, yeah. back brush and I really do. Um, this is a Pat Wagner back brush and comb. Back brush. Yeah. So that's the grooming comb and that is $11.95. Nice. With the oh. handle. We have the normal comb, but that one has the nice handle for you. This is your new Vixen. Great for lizards. Ooh, new Vixen. And the Vixen actually comes with replacement blades and a nice case. These are weeby knives. These um, are, this is a nice. I've heard some good oh. things about that. Yeah. This is a nice knife. Don't cut yourself. Real wood handle. That's pretty cool. It is. Uh, there's, a, you know, that's the biggest thing. When I learned to sharpen a knife, my taxidermy business, my my quality, my work, I mean quadruple. And uh, because I thought I could sharpen a knife, but I really didn't understand what I was doing. Um, it takes practice and time to learn how to sharpen a knife. 
um, you get replaceable blades and you can save that time mounting another deer head. They all come I, with a lot of blades too. I think for these 24. guys, we should do a live on sharpening. Sharpening. Yep. I think that you sharpen a good one. knife. Yep. You could come do my kitchen ones for me. I gotta do my kitchen ones first. <laughs> um, this is a fixed blade, so it's not fold, but what I like about that is the handle's super. Oh yeah. Nice, nice big grip. handle. Yep. And 24 blades with that. High handle, nice color, you'll never lose it. And that one, nineteen fifty for that and 24 blades. Wow. That's all. Yeah. That's a nice product. Um, nice. Well built. You open that? Yes. Use this it. guy is the skinny knife. This is your favorite. I like this knife. Your favorite. I like this knife. Good job. Um, we use a lot of Chicago cutleries. I just li I've always liked a Chicago cutlery knife. Um, Nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. And my Chicago knives work the best after I've sharpened them for a few months and they get narrow up here. They're very easy to get around antler burrs. These come that way. They're already razor sharp. Show this one, maybe. Yeah. That's a nice knife. That is a knife. Nice knife. I like it. Here is your beaver knife. I think it's called a beaver pelter or something like that I've seen somewhere. Um, this is ultra razor sharp without a sharp tip, nice and rounded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that one should be the red fox. Huh? Red fox. Red fox. So that's kind of the same version as the boss dog, but it's a red fox folding knife, comes with 24 blades, a case, and it's 34.50. Actually, this is the boss dog. It must, oh, sorry. Yeah. Boss dog. That's not the boss dog. No, no yeah, that's the full book. Sorry. Boss New products. We're not sure which yeah, ones. But. Boss dog is fixed where it doesn't fold. Um, this, and then we also got our shipment in of Master's Blend. So we now have Master's Blend for you in the 8 ounce and 16 ounce. Awesome. People have asked for Everybody Master's wants Blend. It. So here it is. We got it for you ready to go. And I think uh, I did a little pheasant thing a few weeks back. And little tips on Master Blend that help me are you can keep it refrigerated or even put it in the freezer and it won't freeze, but it really delays the set time. And you can inject bird feet without it hardening up quite so fast. Works exceptionally well. Those are the knives for you. And they're also online, or you can call the ladies in the front and they'll walk you through it. Um, it is almost giveaway time. Okay. So, for tonight's giveaway, what are we giving away? Our sharpener? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> we are going to give away a sharpener, your needle sharpening tool. That's a $40 tool. item. That is. Oh, I don't know. Buy that on Amazon, it's going to be a $50 item. $45.95. <laughs> um, um, that's a very nice giveaway. So what we're going to have you guys do is if you look at the comments where you type in your comment, there's a little button to the left that says share. Push that right now. Hit the little like, maybe a heart, maybe a couple likes, whatever you want to do. Let me see it. Let me watch. Maybe a little wow. A wow. Ooh. 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 Not yet. There's a delay. <laughs> there is a delay. Oh. And then in the comments, tag a friend. Oh, there's one. Tag a friend. <laughs> Take a friend, and then what's your question you want to Look ask? Look at the hearts. Thumbs up. <laughs> Show him his bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, what's your question you want to ask? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, oh you have a question. Just so make sure paint, you know the answer. The paint, paint is, in general terms, paint is comprised of two components. No matter whether it's water paint, it's uh, lacquer paint, oil paint, whatever. It has two mm -hmm. basic components. You guys what, didn't tell us the answer to look for. Uh -oh. I guess we should tell you. <laughs> paint, paint is made up of two, what two components? What two general term components? Right, like almost burned my ear. <laughs> you're just, right you're in charge. Board, so yeah, I, yeah, right, yeah, right in the corner. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, while they're doing that, don't forget we'll be doing live videos every Thursday at 4.30. Central time. We are not the best at planning ahead, so we'll try to do better and let you guys know before what we're right, doing. Right, faster. <laughs> um, but you can 
This is our 2018 catalog. If you don't have one, get one. They are running low, so get on that list for it. They are running low. You can call us at 1-800-488-3256 or visit us online at www.matuskataxfirmy.com. If you like these videos, go to our Facebook page and like and follow because we do them every Thursday and it will notify you that we're doing it. And if they don't have the catalog, they can go online and all of the new products will be online. All the, yep, all the new products that we add throughout the year that aren't in the print version, we keep putting in the new product spot. On the we website. got a lot of pigment and carrier, but it is not pigment and carrier. Really That's close. pretty close. That's pretty close. We were looking for a different word, but carrier is a pretty we good one. We better take the first pigment carrier, you think? E <laughs> Let me see. Um, the first one would be Joe Martin. Joe, Joe Martin. Martin. Yeah, very, very, good. Good. very good, Joe. We're looking for a vehicle, yeah. but a carrier and a vehicle got to be synonymous to me. Pigment vehicle. <laughs> so you have a sharpened air coming your way. Good boy. Um, good. And check back with us because we should have them in a couple weeks. We'll be carrying them. Um, and any of these products you saw today, remember to like and share. We also still have our $500 giveaway going for supplies. Um, so just by sharing this video, you are in the running to get that. So keep sharing and tagging us and all your stuff. We really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.